Hi, I'm Brad Sweezy, president of Sweezy Experiences and Sweezy Travel. I am a travel agent. Now, I'm wearing this hat and this jacket, despite the fact that I'm in Florida wearing shorts, <laughs> which you can't see, but I wanted to wear the hat to show you, all right, when you go to Alaska, you got to be prepared for all kinds of weather. And as I'll get to later in my uh, report, you'll see that sometimes it gets very hot in Alaska. So it's a very interesting climate, uh, depending on when you go. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take off the, the hat and the jacket, because like I said, I'm in Florida. So I want to talk to you today about the seven Alaska cruise mistakes and how to avoid them. And uh, I think this will help you in your cruise planning or your trip planning. The, the mistakes we're going to go over are you don't give Alaska enough time. You forget about the land part sometimes. You pick the wrong kind of stateroom if you're doing a cruise. You don't consider your own personality. You're not comparing itineraries. You're not budgeting for sure excursions. And you're not considering the weather. So this is a little bit about me. I've been to Alaska four times, four different ships in companies, large to expedition type of ships. And uh, there's my uh, bell. You think you get turned off all the sound, but you don't. Um, land, train, seaplane, helicopter. I've I've done it done it all in Alaska almost. So um, that experience is very important to you and help you guide help to guide you with your Alaska cruise experience. In addition, I've been around the world. Uh, you know, you can see those places listed. I'm also an Air Force veteran officer, so I did spend time in uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia during Operation Desert Storm. You don't see Alaska, but you see some interesting things over there in Saudi Arabia. So I've been around a little bit, and I put that experience to your use to help you design the best Alaska cruise for you and your personality. That's very important, as I'll get to later. The first thing about Alaska is you're not giving Alaska enough time. Alaska is huge. I mean, it's a big state. I mean, you can see it on the map there. You really have to have a seven-day cruise as a minimum. And you want to consider places like the Inside Passes, uh, Glacier Discovery, Explorer Alaska, those kinds of things. A 14-day cruise, especially if you're traveling far. For us in Florida, for example, it's easier for us to go to Europe than it is to Alaska. So you really want to make sure you're spending enough time, especially if that's going to be your only time going to Alaska. I know the first time I went, I thought I was only going once. But now I've been back four times and I'm probably going to go back some even more because I really enjoy Alaska. You know, you can do a longer cruise. You can do land and sea options. So if you're only going to do it once, do it right. The second mistake is you forget about the land part. You got to go to Denali. Uh, we were like a record when we saw it. I think it was four or five times we saw Denali, which is very hard to see uh, sometimes because of cloud cover and, and things like that. You got to do the railroad if you can. Um, you want to do the National Park, uh, Wrangell St. Elias National Park, Anchorage, Homer, Mendenhall Glacier. There's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, so that all these pictures that you're seeing are my pictures. So or somebody with me took the pictures of me, et cetera. I like taking pictures. You know, video is a little bit tougher to do, um, but I like pictures. The third mistake is you pick the wrong stateroom, right? Now, it really depends on your budget and your interest in seeing Alaska. Now, if you really like to sleep and you don't have a huge budget, you know, you book an interior cabin. You just spend most of your time doing like these people are doing out and about taking pictures. I mean, so if you've got, you know, more money, you can do it, you know, a window, you can do a balcony, obviously, and sides are back. There's so much to see. And often the stuff you want to see is on the other side, especially with wildlife. So it's just it's just interesting. You know, the back is great. That picture uh, on the left is, you know, on I think it was on a Princess Cruise. And you could book that nice area when you're uh, looking at glaciers, et cetera. It was a little cold that day. But then again, I'm in Florida, so everything's cold to me, right? <laughs> the fourth mistake is not picking the right ship for your personality. Now, when you go, let's say, on Facebook groups and you say, which ship should I do? Rich, you know, and people will give you their opinion. They may be the type of people who love jazz music or hate music or love gambling or don't love gambling or they like, you know, exploring, you, you know, like like we do. You know, there's all kinds of ships. And, and like I said, we've been on four different cruise lines and four different personalities of people on the ship. 
So you really want to find the right ship for your personality, especially if you have a more uh, unlimited budget, let's say, right? So you want to really, really want to find the ship for you because it really will influence your experience. The smaller ships uh, can really take you to places that the big ships can't. Like, uh, you know, Petersburg, Alaska, um, it's like a little Norway town. It's very small, but you need a small ship to get there. And most of the major cruise lines, you're never going to go there. So, uh, but on your first one, you know, you're probably going to pick more of a major cruise line um, and, and, and explore it. Do you like entertainment, right? I mentioned that before. I mean, what are you going to do when you're not out there exploring or doing an excursion, et cetera, along those lines? Do you have kids with you? You know, because if you have kids with you and you're not doing a group, a big group, you might not like a, a ship that has a generally older population on it because the kids might not have something to do. What's your dining profile like? Do you like doing more freestyle dining? You know, you don't really care. Or do you like fine dining? You know, and each ship generally has fine dining, obviously. And if you do some of the expedition ships, you're always going to eat well, right? You're always going to eat well. But in the expedition ship, you're not going to get entertainment, but you are going to get an intimate experience with Alaska. So these are some of the things you have to consider. And somebody like me, you talk to me, et cetera, and we talk. We can kind of build the right ship for you. So you go there and you maximize your fun because fun is different to every type of person, depending on what your age bracket is. I always say this to my daughter when she was eight, she thought beady babies were the funnest thing in the world, right? Now she's 31, not so fun anymore. So you really want to find that right experience for you. The fifth mistake is not comparing itineraries, right? So you really, what do you want to see? And I list, you know, some of these different types of uh, things that you want to see, et cetera. I mean, so there's all different types of things. This picture here is on an expedition cruise. And look, we it was very windy that day. And we kayaked. That that picture wasn't it didn't get as close. We got really close to that glacier. So you really want to check out the itineraries. You know, um, depending on your goal, do you want to do the salmon, salmon run? You know, late May to early July. Bears. July through September. We've been there four different times. I've seen bears uh, actually two of the three times um, saw bears, uh, you know, on land and one uh, kayaking. <laughs> you know, I should have probably put that picture on. If you contact me, I'll find the picture and send it to you. You know, whales, May through September. You know, uh, whales are a great thing to see. And when people spot the whales, you know, everybody runs from they're on the uh, uh, the port side of the ship, everyone will run to that side, you know, and go to the other side. So, you know, sometimes you just got to be flexible there. You know, mountains, they're always there, right? And the glaciers, you want to see them before they melt. And what's interesting, the first time we went to Alaska was 2016. The last time we went was 2022, uh, you know, and before that, 2021, and I think 2019. So if you go back to those same glaciers, you can see how they, they've changed over the years. So it's it's a very interesting experience. And do you want to consider a um, round trip or one way? You know, typically, if you're going to do some land part, most of the time you're going to do a one way cruise, right? You'll either, you know, maybe you'll start, let's say you start in Vancouver and, and end in, in, in Sitka, for example, or something like that. You can decide those things. And that's where you build on that land exploration part of it. If you want to do a tour, a land tour, we can help you. We've done that. We've gone through all the lodges, et cetera. And even when we were there, we got to experience a, a, a wildfire and uh, what that does to your experience. So you really want to consider all of that stuff. And, and most of the time people plan their Alaska cruises, you know, either six months out or a year and a half out once the, you know, the ships popes, the itineraries, et cetera. So you really want to build it. And if you're going to do it, you know, do it right. The sixth mistake is not budgeting for sure excursions, right? And so you really want to figure out what kind of experience you do. Like these are all pictures we we take, uh, we took on, you know, one, I was on a cruise, you know, where you do a shore excursion, et cetera. And we went whale hunting, whale spotting, not whale hunting. Maybe the whales were hunting us, uh, you know, seaplane. That helicopter is, we, we did a helicopter before and we, you know, went in dog sledding up there. And we also did the dog sledding that was through, I can't remember what port it was. I think it was maybe Juno, but um, that was not the greatest experience. It was early. It was, it was May. It really wasn't snow, basically. So you still got to see the dogs and pet them, 
but you didn't get the experience of, you know, dog sledding on a glacier, which is pretty, pretty cool. Seventh mistake is not being prepared for the weather, right? Plan for rain, plan for cold, plan even for heat. I, I think that um, this was last, so this was 2021. When we got off, you know, the cruise, uh, I think we were in Juneau, um, there are people out there on that pink flamingo in shorts, you know, being towed. Now, somebody from Florida would be going, uh, I'm not doing that. It's kind of cold, but Alaska can surprise you with the weather. But the main thing is, you know, bring the appropriate amount of coal, clothes for, you know, cold weather and rainy weather. A lot of times, like when you saw that, uh, when we went to the, the whale um, spotting, you know, they gave you that big, big thing to keep you, keep you warm. So you can really, and they can buy stuff like, look, I'll buy a, I'll buy something in every town I go to, right? So I mean, went to Norway once and I, I, I think I forgot the jacket. I said, this jacket's cool. And I bought the jacket. So, you know, but bring enough stuff so that you're comfortable if it's too cold or if it's too warm. It's generally not going to be too warm, but just be prepared for the rain. And and you go in with that that right attitude of um, flexibility. You know, I was an Air Force officer. We used to say flexibility is the key to air power. So you really want to be flexible, prepare <clears throat> prepare for the worst, but, you know, ex expect the best. But that's why you use layers. You know, I I, I have constantly different layers. I'm wearing a sweater now, which is hot for me, but you really want to be prepared for that. So what I offer uh, people is like an Alaska memories building consultation. So there's no obligation. We'll talk a little bit, uh, you know, get some ideas of what you want to do, who's going, you know, your health status, you know, I don't like to walk. I like to walk. I like to walk, but I can't walk those kind of things. And so by doing that, that's where you get the experience that you want because what happens is there's so many itineraries right there's so many people with so many opinions on what they thought was a great alaska experience right but it may not be the greatest alaska experience for you and uh, you know how old are your kids are they older younger you know those kind of things and are you going with grandparents parents you know all these kind of things you want to factor into something and then build the right crews or find the right crews and the land crews and, and all the exploration, you want to find it with that. And then we help you develop that, that trip. And then we, well, you know, if you like us, we'll help you actually book the trip and, and do everything from that. And um, I guess that's about it. Alaska is a great experience. I, it, it's, 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 I don't want to say it's like Norway because Norway is beautiful in its own right. <laughs> But for those people who don't necessarily want to go to Europe, um, Alaska really is a great place to go. And um, I, like I said, I only expected to go there once. I've gone there four times and I'm going to go there more times because I like it uh, so much. So that's it. And if you have any questions, you know, you can call me at the phone numbers below. You can email me at Brad Sweezy, Brad at SweezyTravel.com. And you can find Sweezy Travel Experiences on Facebook. Um, we do a lot of interaction with a lot of the groups there. And um, we go from that. But that's it. So have a great time. This is a picture I've taken of Alaska. So um, one of the many I've taken in Alaska. And if you want photos of anything, you can always email me. And I chances are I've got a photo of, of, of something in Alaska. Okay. Thank you and have a great day.